everyone to Going Deeper. Uh, my name is Carrie Hastings. And I'm Heather McCormick, but my husband's name is Barrick Fredrickson, so yes, we are, we are associated. <laughs> <laughs> and you may also um, be familiar with Heather and I because we um, host on our online church services, so if you are ever watching our digital um, services on Sunday, you may be interacting with one of us. Yep. So, uh, so we are going to be going a little deeper and continuing the conversation from Sunday um, where Reed was talking about and continuing the conversation about the one journey. Exactly. So the one journey has been a, a church-wide journey of discipleship, getting deep into the discipleship journey together. And so we already did an introduction to the one journey. We talked about one name. We talked about how it's all about the name of Jesus Christ. In this past week, we talked about how one name influences one life, changes and transforms one life at a time. Yeah, it was so good. And just the idea that we are alive to change a life. Yes. And so one life on another life on another life. Absolutely. And so we're going to talk about just kind of some of our takeaways, but we're going to read the scripture first. Absolutely. Um, Heather, we're going to, sure. Heather's going to read for us um, from Colossians chapter one, verses three through eight. Absolutely. The Bible says, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you. As indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Mm. I love that. And the mention that Paul gives of Epaphras, mm -hmm. um, he said, you have heard this. You have heard this good news from Epaphras. So we hear is Epaphras. He's one life. Mm -hmm. And he is sharing one name with the Absolutely. Colossians, and, and then there it goes. They are walking out their faith mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus, and it's become known to the world. So yeah. so what were your some, some of your takeaways from yeah. the, the service on Sunday? So I was sitting in the early service, and it was such a great service. And the whole time I was thinking about how what Reed was saying was tying into a small group that I'm part of right now. And it's doing the starting point program that Andy Stanley's church has put together. Mm -hmm. And basically this whole idea of starting point is people in different walks, in different parts of their walk with Christ. And they're, we're all getting together and sharing how Christ mm -hmm. has transformed our life. If uh, we've seen that transformative journey or if we're just curious about what Christianity even is. And one of the biggest takeaways that I had from week one of Starting Point was that the Bible didn't exist for the early Christians. When people were first being called Christian, they weren't reading about it. In fact, a lot of people weren't even literate. People were hearing the stories about Christ, how he healed, how he literally said, I'm going to die and be raised back to life. They heard that with their ears because people were telling their story and how they interacted with Jesus while he was on earth. And it blows my mind that we read in the Bible the stories that were told and were spread, mouth telling another yes. mouth yeah. and spreading the good news, um, the gospel, the good news. And so that was such an influential thing for me because mm -hmm. I realized the importance of stories. Yeah. That's how we pass on our legacy, and that's how Jesus had his legacy first passed down, and how it grew exponentially. Like we read in the book of Acts, the church was growing exponentially. It yeah. wasn't one, it was one person at a time, but it was droves of people being changed because they were all talking to each other. Yeah. And talking about what Jesus had done. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Carrie, what did what did you take? 
from this week's yeah, show. Yeah, so I, I actually like had a connection too, kind of to mm -hmm. some stuff that I had been learning lately. And um, so, and Heather and I were just talking right before we got on that we're both reading through the Old Testament right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're right now currently in the book of Judges, which is a toughie. It is. <laughs> uh, it's a tough one. But um, one of the things that um, I really connected to just the idea of telling your story, um, here we are in Judges, we've the Israelites, um, God has brought them out of slavery. Mm -hmm. He has um, parted the Red Sea, that, and they walked through on dry land, and he went before them, and they conquered lands, yeah. and um, here they are in the Promised Land living out their lives, mm -hmm. um, and yet, um, unfortunately, they're turning to other gods. Yeah. And so where the story part comes in for me is that... Um, uh, here we are. I'll just read it for you. In Judges 2, verses 10, um, verse 10, Joshua, after Moses had just died, and it says, After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how tragic is that? That, you know, it's hard to believe they didn't know the stories of what God had done yeah um and so they didn't know who he was and and how what a, an amazing part he had played in in their lives and the lives before them and it just goes to show that um when we talk about what god has done in our lives um first of all it it impacts us yeah because we need to be reminded we need to yes. just take that time to reflect on how what has god done in my life and what how has he been working but um, it, it impacts our children, our future generations, mm -hmm. and, and it encourages the people around us. I know that when I hear a story from somebody else of something that God has done, um, you know, it could be a day-to-day -day thing. He answered a prayer. Um, it, it, it builds my faith. It encourages me. And so, um, so that's the challenge this week, that, so the charge that Reed mm -hmm. gave us going forward is to tell, tell your story. Mm -hmm. Um, what, where have you seen, um, God's work in your life? Mm -hmm. Um, but there are, that, that it also, we, we know that could be challenging. So, you know, Heather, yes. for you or, or for anyone who might be hesitant to share their story, what is it that you think, um, what is it that holds us back? Yeah. You know, for me, it, I think it really comes down to vulnerability. I am a big fan of reading. I've got tons of books on my list and Brene Brown constantly comes up as someone who speaks about vulnerability and how it's so difficult to break down your own barriers, to be honest with yourself and to be honest with other people. Um, and vulnerability is about embracing your story and seeing how life has so transformed um, in, in the short or long period that you've been alive. Yeah. And for me, vulnerability is just, you have to, there's so much acceptance that has to happen. There's, there's a worry that you're going to be judged or, yeah. you know, your story doesn't make a big enough splash. Like it's not, mm -hmm. you didn't go across the planet and, and do all these incredible things on a missions trip. Like faith acted out is going and driving in the car to go get groceries. Mm -hmm. Like that's where transformation happens. And like being vulnerable about those small moments and those big moments, it's, that's the barrier for me because we want to put on that brave face and we often ask each other, you know, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. And in, in a world where we just want to brush off the problems, vulnerability is such a huge barrier to yeah. sharing the truth of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that is definitely a, an obstacle, I think. Yeah. And I think another obstacle that keeps us from sharing our story is sometimes we feel like, well, it's not really a neat and tidy, I don't really have the end yet. Like, yeah. I'm still in the thick of it. That's okay. Um, God's still working. He's still got his hand on you. And um, if you can see him showing up in the thick of it, even if you don't have the answer, even if things aren't turning out the way that you thought they would, um, it's part of your story and um, it can change somebody's life. Absolutely. So if you need help in... Um, Kind of identifying what what are you actually going to tell on my tell my story that one 
there is, if you get into a little bit, there is a story identification guide that you can download. That you can... All right, so if you need help um, trying to figure out what part of your story you're gonna tell, online on the tellmystory.one website, there is a story identification guide that you can download or you can use right there on the website. And it kind of just walks you through some of the components of a story and helps you kind of figure out which part of your story do you want to tell. Exactly. So, and I love that you can find this worksheet and so many other resources on the tellmystory.one website. So you're not going to be the first person to share your story. There are literally over a hundred people who have already shared. At least. Yeah. And it's such an amazing thing to have these examples of faith as well. So Carrie, how are you going to tell your story? Um, I'm going to do the long text version. I've awesome. started already and um, I actually got this little story identification guide out. It's kind of helping me put some pieces together and yeah, so that's what I'm working on. Great. And how about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to end up recording myself and actually sharing my story um, verbally for the first cool. time in a really long time. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, we do hope you're going to join us on this one journey and, um, you know, that you, you would share your story. Join us in on, on this. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us today in this conversation and um, going deeper and hope you have a great week. Yes. Happy Easter. Bye guys.